Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Decked Out. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsors and patrons like you, but more on that in a minute. For today's episode, we're going to be playing the new Brothers War Precon decks. These are some of the most powerful Precon decks ever made. But now, it's time to meet the players. I'm the one, James. I am a constructed Magic the Gathering YouTuber and Twitch streamer, and today I am playing Ashnod, the Uncaring. I'm going to be utilizing that ability to make my creatures and artifacts sacrifice other artifacts, copy them, and get a whole bunch of value and kill all, all my opponents with my copied artifacts. Hey there, I'm Astral Slam. I'm an MTG Arena content creator as well as a Commander player and content creator. Uh, in this game, I am jamming Mishra, Eminent One. I'm going to be hoping to make Mishra's War Form, make copies of some super cool artifacts that have ETBs, do shenanigans, and try to keep adding more card advantage to the game. Hello everybody, I'm MTG Nerd Girl, and today we're playing Urza, Chief Artificer. This has affinity for artifacts, comes in super cheap, and my entire deck is designed to make a ton of little constructs. I'm gonna overrun the board, and they're gonna not be able to stop me. Hi, I'm Veggie Wagon, content creator. Today, I'm gonna be playing Taunos, Solemn Survivor. Tokens, copies of tokens, copies of tokens that are copies of tokens. This is gonna be very cool, very specific, but very cool. Before we get into the gameplay, let's take a minute to introduce you to our sponsors. Coolstuffinc.com is the best place to pick up anything from singles to sealed product. And don't forget to use code DGEN at checkout for 5% off your order. And if you need a little deck building inspiration, head over to edhrec.com where they can help you to find the best synergies to match your budget and style. And now that you've got your deck list, you're gonna need some new sleeves. Head on over to Dragon Shield where they have all of your accessory needs covered. We have links in the description below. And don't forget, there's always a free way you can support us as well. You can always like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can head over to our Patreon, where you can find perks like tokens signed by guests on the show, spell table games with the cast, and even the chance to submit your own deck list for us to play here on the show. And that's enough from us. Let's get into the gameplay. Welcome to the table. We're going to be seeing who goes first by opening our collector booster sampler to see who has the highest CMC. Temporal anchor and a bone okay. saw six. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll take second. I love that card. Everybody set? I think so. Yeah. All, right. All right. I will draw for starting my turn, and as they always say, play the most broken card in the game, an island untapped. I'll pass the turn. I agree, definitely the most broken card. All right, let's go ahead and draw. I finally get to do the thing. I've played a handful of games of Commander before, but I've never gotten to do the thing before. Uh, I'm gonna copy you and do the most powerful thing in the game, uh, but I'm gonna do the thing a new Commander player Rarely gets to do for the first time. I have a turn one soul ring. Wow. Whoa. That's never happened before. <laughs> High five. Woohoo! Wait, they have two islands and a soul ring. Do we just like quit? Well, yeah, we, we just uh, now, instant speed, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Is there a follow up after your soul ring? No, I will pass the turn. Okay. Draw. All I've got is this temple of silence. I'm gonna scry one. I, that's, I love this card. I'm gonna keep it on top. It might not be the best idea. Pass. Well, that's not an island, so that's gotta be good for the home team, right? All right, uh, I draw for turn. I will play a Terramorphic Expanse, and I'll pass. All right, strong follow-ups here. I'll draw for turn, and we'll draw down a mountain, and I'm gonna tap that mountain for this Wayfarer's Bobble, and I'll ship it over after that. Let's draw, and for my turn, I'm going to play an Ethereum Sculptor. It's a one-two that uh, gives, makes my artifacts cost one less. And for my land for turn, I'll go ahead and play Azorius Chancery, returning the island to my hand, and I'll pass the turn. I didn't think these precons ramped so much. Nerd Girl could cast a six mana artifact on turn three of the game. You're damn right I can. You still have under, you have seven? Cards One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Oh yeah, because you, you, you played stuff on each turn. Wow, accusing me of cheating already. Yeah? <laughs> Why not? I'm just gonna play this Temple of Deceit. Scry one again. It's a lot of temples. Uh, yeah, I think we that needs to be there. Um, and then I'm gonna pay one for Skull Clamp. Oh. Okay. Power. Yeah. Pass. Uh, at the end of your turn, I'm gonna sacrifice Terramorphic Expanse. <laughs> Optimal. And I will get an island tapped. Optimal. He waited until 
the end of my turn, so we wouldn't know what land he would run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, what could he possibly have in his deck? <laughs> in, in, in the pre -cons? In the pre -con. <laughs> I'll draw for turn. A mountain. And pass my turn. Draw. I think I actually have some plays this time, so I'm super excited. This is one of my favorite plays to do. I'm going to drop in the Arcane Signet, and I'm immediately going to tap that, producing a black... I'm gonna play this Nahil spell bomb. I can sacrifice to exile someone's graveyard, or the additional thing is when it's put into a graveyard from play, I can play it back. If I do, I draw a card. Getting rid of a graveyard and drawing a card, that's value. I'll pass the turn though. All right. Draw for the turn. I'm gonna play this sneaky surprise island that you guys didn't know I had, <gasps> but I'm gonna do something kinda cool. And I'm gonna cast a three mana Solemn Simulacrum. When it enters the battlefield, I can look for a land put on the battlefield, uh, tapped, and when it dies, I also get to draw. Have you ramped every turn? Are <laughs> you mm. playing green mana? Mwahahaha. No, you have ramped every turn, right? Turn true. one, Soul Ring. Turn two, the, was the Sculptor, yeah. right? Yep. And then turn three, the Jesus. Which is funny, because I never play green, so I'm usually the person at the table that has no ramp, so this feels pretty good. Oh, I'm playing this deck. Where is my, where is my <laughs> ramp? Mwahaha, <laughs> 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 get wrecked, veggie. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna uh, end up floating an extra mana here, but I'm gonna go ahead and cast a Preordain. I get to scry two, then draw a card. So let's go ahead and scry the two. I will put them both back on top. I will draw this card. And with my one white floating mana and my uh, sculptor, uh -oh. I'll go ahead and play a Steel <laughs> Overseer. I can tap and give plus one, plus one to all my artifacts. It's a pre-con. It's a pre-con. And then I'll pass the turn, yeah. Veggie. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna tap. <laughs> Draw my card. Uh, I'm gonna play another tapped land, Sunken Hollow. And it's no it's no Nurgle ramp, but I guess I'm, I'll tap two. I'll play Orsav Signet. That's that's all I got. That's all I got. That's However, it is ramp. It is ramp. I'll draw for turn and see if I can cast a spell. That would be incredible. I will play a swamp, and then I'll play a cursed mirror. This is two and a red for an artifact. You can tap it to add red mana. As cursed mirror enters the battlefield, you may have it become a copy of any creature on the battlefield until end of turn, except it has haste. Is there a creature that I want it to become a copy of as it enters the battlefield? Actually, actually, I don't. Good. I don't currently have a. Oh, you don't know that. Have a. I don't. You don't know if I have, don't have a land in my hand or not. But I will have it enter as a copy of Solemn Simulacrum, which will let me search my library for a basic land and put on the battlefield tapped. That's really good, especially if, like, for some reason you didn't have a land in your hand. Mm. Yeah, if I didn't have a land in my hand, it would be great. It's also great here. And with that said, I will shuffle up and pass my turn. Okay. Now Cursed Mirror becomes an artifact again. Draw for turn. I will totally play this land that I, I didn't top deck at all, um, by Risky Keep at all. Uh, and we'll go ahead and tap my Arcane Signet for a block, my Swamp, and this island as well to play a Commander Sphere. Um, of that same notion, I am going to actually tap both my mountain and my commander sphere. My commander sphere is going to make a blue. And I'm going to sacrifice my wayfarer's bobble to go search for a basic land and put on the battlefield tapped. We haven't really talked about ramp yet so far, but uh, the, the amount of ramp in these decks is kind of wild. It's like ramp, 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 Curse ramp, 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 ramp. Honestly, these pre-cons feel a lot higher power than the other ones oh. from looking at the list, yeah. yeah. I'll pass the turn. All right, uh, let's go ahead and untap. I'm gonna play a Temple of Silence for turn. And let's go ahead and tap Soul Ring and my Zorius for a Dig Sight Engineer that says, whenever I cast an artifact spell, I may pay two if I do create a zero zero colorless construct artifact and it gets plus one plus one for each artifact I control. Pretty good. Wow. And that's every time you cast one, not just once per turn? Yeah. Every time. Yeah. It's, it's a good card. <laughs> it, it seems decent. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and move to combat. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break tradition, Veggie. I'm not going to attack you. And I'm just going to go ahead and send Solemn Simulacrum to my buddy Astrals here. No blocks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and give everything plus one, plus one counters. And I'm going to hit you for three, my friend. 
I feel like in a past life I had this coming for something for something I did, but you got it. I'll take the three for now. And that'll be my turn. I don't know if I'm more suspicious that <laughs> I didn't get the, I didn't get the attack first. Or am I jealous? <laughs> <laughs> two for Demir Signet. And then one, two, three for Chrome Courier. It's a one one flyer. When it enters the battlefield, I reveal the top two cards, uh, put one in my hand, the other in my graveyard. And if I get an artifact, I gain three life. Reveal, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna take the see the Synod. And since it is an artifact, I gain three life. And now I'm winning. <laughs> For now. For now. Uh, That's not a threat. Yeah. It's not a threat. Okay. Okay. I pass my turn. I draw. I'm going to cast a Rakdos Signet. Then I'm going to tap for Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. Two... And a blue and a red for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast a historic spell, draw a card. Artifacts, legendaries, and sagas are historic. And I'll pass my turn. That seems shenanigans, but okay. <laughs> I'll untap. I don't know if I have the shenanigans right now. There's shenanigans right there to your left. This is nothing. It's fine. <laughs> this, everything that is happening on my board is fair and even. And I'm actually quite behind on this board, if you think about it. Okay. I really think... Veggie's the problem. <laughs> you see, the trick is to never be the threat. But I wouldn't let everybody else know that. If the past tells us anything, we've we've never we've never underestimated Nerd Girl and and with what's on the board, that's never happened before. I think I'm gonna do the cool thing I, I'm excited about with these new precons that we're playing. Uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and tap four. I'm gonna cast the cool new flashy Mishra Eminent One. It is a 5-4 for 5, so great stats. At the beginning of my combat on my turn, I create a token that's a copy of target non-creature artifact I control. Except its name is Mishra's Warform, and it's a 4-4 artifact creature. In addition to its other types, it gains haste until the turn, and then I sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. With that, I'd like to move to combat, and I do have a few artifacts. Uh, I would like to target my Nihil Spellbomb. So I will get a Mishra's Warform, a 4-4 that is in a Hill Spellbomb, which when I get to sacrifice it, I, I have a mana open, so it hits the graveyard. I'll be able to draw a card. It was kind of good. NG, you hit me for three. I did. Veggie's open. I'm, I'm actually going to swing at Veggie, because I feel like he has to be swung. <laughs> I'm not open. I have a creature. Nerd How girl, you hit it? me. I'm going to attack Veggie. <laughs> Love you, buddy. But I gotta go with four. Someone's gotta attack it first before before we go after a threat. I also, I just looked at my hand and I was like, oh, right. The whole reason I played this Chrome Courier earlier was to try and draw a land because I missed my land draw. <laughs> it's not important. Not important. Uh, okay, so it's just it's just a four four that also is the spell bomb. Correct. I will take four from the spell bomb. Okay. You're no longer winning to my end step and sacrifice my artifact upon hitting the bin because it's a copy I would like to play back and draw a card for having sacrificed the war form and I'll pass it over that sounds pretty nice. good it's a good turn you sure Astral's that attack on him wasn't like a please nerd girl don't attack me back <laughs> all right I'm gonna play an exotic orchard for my turn and I don't have much else to do um, I played all my cards too quickly, so I don't have a lot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just attempt to attack somebody. How big is everybody's stuff? How big is that thing? 3-3. Three, three. It's a 3-3, three, three, huh? Okay, I could. I would like to attack you. I will attack you with my Solemn Simulacrum and my Sculptor. It's a 3-3 three, three and a 2-3. I will go with no blocks looking at that Steel Overseer right there. Drat. Okay, I'll pump it anyway. <laughs> and uh, I'll hit you for four, five, six, seven damage. Ouch. To two. I take seven. And I don't have anything else to do, so that's going to be your turn. You can't kick those tricks past me there, girl. Drat. Well, you know what? I'm going to start off and uh, play the Seed of the Synod. Uh, it's in my hand for my land for turn. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Four, solemn simulacrum. <gasps> 
You know what this does? I'm gonna grab a basic land. Weren't you over here complaining that you just didn't have ramp and then you played Signet, Signet, so on? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna grab this planes, comes into play tapped. I'm gonna tap two for a cranial plating. Ooh. Equip creature gets plus one, plus zero for each artifact you control. Uh, you can pay two black to attach it to instant speed, or you can equip for one colorless. I'm gonna pass my turn. And I might have a very, very interesting turn here. It's about time for my artifacts to shine. I'm going to start out by tapping these for Thran Dynamo. This adds three colorless mana to my mana pool if I tap it. Since it's an artifact, I'll draw a card. I will tap for Commander Sphere. Since it is an artifact, I'll draw a card. Um, I will play my land for turn as Great Furnace, artifact land that adds red mana. So I will go ahead and cast Traxos, a Scourge of Krug. Precon All-Star. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On the cast, it is, an art, it is a historic spell, so I will draw a card. It enters the battlefield tapped, and it doesn't untap during your untapped step. Whenever you cast a historic spell, untap Traxos. Since I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 mana worth of non-creature artifacts I control, I can untap my Traxos by playing Metalwork Colossus from my hand for free. Oh, no. That will trigger Joyra and Traxos to untap, and Joyra will draw me another card. How does that thing come into play so cheaply? It costs X less to cast, where X is the total mana value of non-creature artifacts you control. I can sacrifice two artifacts to return Metalwork Colossus from my graveyard back to my hand. That, that's all I have. I'm not doing anything else for the rest of the game. Please don't target me. All right, I will pass my turn. <laughs> that's what every threat says. <laughs> I might have gone too hard. <laughs> Maybe a little. I think I might have spread that over two turns and we wouldn't all kill you. Yeah, I think I, I have a plan. Okay. I think I have a plan to at least deal with two potential threats, not not everything. Okay. I'm not a miracle worker. Um, so I am going to go ahead and tap two islands to start here. We're going to tap them for two, and I'm going to play this Rakdos Tignet. Uh, with that, I'm going to tap my Swamp. And I'm also going to play an Executioner's Capsule. Executioner's Capsule is great because I can tap one colorless and one black, tap it, and sacrifice to destroy target non-black creature. All right, so I've got this Executioner's Capsule out. Mishra's on the board. Let's see if I can make a copy of my capsule as a war form and take out two of the biggest threat creatures on the board. My war form is going to be an Executioner's Capsule. And I've got four mana open. And I think I've got my eyes on, on two threats here. As, as scary as Traxos and the Colossus are, I think that card advantage on Joyra is a little bit of an issue. And that Overseer is making me scared too. So I am... He's not doing anything. I, that's what they all say. He's fine. That, that's what they all say. Uh, I'm going to choose to tap my Mishra's Warform and my Executioner's Capsule. Sacrifice them both and I will put a target on Joyra and a target on the Steel Overseer. I have no response. I hate this. I have no response either, so. I'm no longer the threat. I am okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's draw. Uh, to start my turn, we're gonna go ahead and play a Sharding Sphinx. It's gonna cost one less because of my Sculptor, so it's gonna cost me five mana. Uh, and then I'll also pay the additional two from the Engineer here that makes a uh, zero, zero construct when I play an artifact, which my creature is indeed an artifact. And then I'm going to go to combat. So I can't attack into Traxos or anything. You look kind of weak, and so do you. But I'm more scared of you. You're annoying. <coughs> so I don't think you're going to want to trade. So I'm going to go ahead and attack you with my 4-4 four, four Simulacrum. I accept the 4. So you took the damage, the Sharding Sphinx will allow me to make a 1-1 one, one Thopter with flying. And that's it, that'll be my turn. Okay, well, I, I have a card with a lot of text I need to read this one. It's probably not good, you should just pass your turn. All right, so I just drew a bad card, so I'm gonna pass my turn. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to tap one, I'm going to equip Skull Clamp to Chrome Courier, which will make it dead. I'm going to play Orsav Basilica for my land for turn. Return the planes in my hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Windmill slam. Steel Hellkite. 
Oh boy, that's a big, big one. Yeah, it's a five-five flyer. I can pay two to give it plus one and plus zero, but nobody cares about that. Uh, what's important is. I can pay X, destroy each non-land permanent with mana value X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Activate only once each turn. I'm going to be blowing up some people's stuff. I'm glad I have a little Thopter now. I'm wondering who you're going to target with that. Uh, it's, well, I wouldn't worry about it. me, right? He can't really target you much because he's he, your stuff costs too much, right? All right. I'll go to my turn. <clears throat> Untap all my rocks. I draw. I don't want to put a bigger target on my back. Hmm. I'll do it for you. No. Don't do that. <laughs> we'll even get the paint. We'll like, uh, just get it ready. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I am going to go to combat. Use Traxos to attack MTG Nerd Girl. Me? That seems rude. You're the problem. Plus, you already attacked me. I'm certainly not the problem. You attacked me already. That's No one else attacked me. That's true. I did. And you're attacking me for how much? Seven. Trample. I do have a... I mean, I could double block it and try to kill it. Sure. Hmm. Does he have a trick, though, is the question. I have a 6-6 six, six construct. It's pretty good. I'm worried about this Hellkite. No blocks. All right. Seven to the face. Now we're even. All of us. It's okay. I want to do that just because I want to untap it again. All right. We're going to play a Seed of the Synod as my land, and that counts as an artifact. I will tap my Seed of the Synod for one blue mana to cast Thoughtcast. This has affinity for artifacts. It costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. Draw two cards. It sounds like a fair and balanced card. Yeah, I'd never cut it in any standard format. Never. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now do I want to deal with the Hellkite, or do I just want to leave it alone for a second? I think you should deal with it. If you don't, if you don't kill it this turn, I'll hit Nerdgirl with it first. I have a Thopter. And I'm pro I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, don't do that. I have a thopter, you can't hit me. You may have a thopter. Look, I'm 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 just offering that to you and you, whatever your action is will inform me on what your decision was. Okay, so what what happens if I kill the steel hell kite? You find out. Will it be bad for me? You'll find out. And, and, okay. You should uh, kill it. Okay. Yeah. You're the one most All right, you know, you know what? I already attacked you. You I did say to, we were I, I have to do some stuff to Veggie now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana to cast Spine of Ishsa. When Spine of Ishsa enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. When Spine of Ishsa is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Spine of Ishsa to its owner's hand. I will choose to destroy your Steel Hellkite. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Steal Hawkeye dead. Now that we have that problem out of the way, also tracks us on tasks because it's an artifact, I'll pass my turn. Okay. This is no turn one play like you, Nurgle, but, you know, I, I want to follow up in fashion, and I'm going to tap my swamp here, and I'm, I'm going to play my soul ring. So that'll give me a total of seven mana for the Wondrous Crucible. Permanence I control of Ward 2. At the beginning of my end step, I mill two cards, and then I exile a non-land card at random from my graveyard, copy it, and I may cast that copy without paying its mana cost. All right, so all my stuff is Ward 2 now. I don't have to worry about any threats, and I'm gonna start getting stuff back from the graveyard as a copy. This is gonna be great. Your deck is a lot more complicated than my deck. I, I there, you're, there's a lot going on over there. Yeah, I didn't follow that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get more copies of things, and what's better, of one Wondrous Crucible than two, because I'd like to move to combat. My Mishra's Warform is gonna be a copy of my Wondrous Crucible. But I'm not gonna to move to, uh, to any attacks. Uh, I'm actually gonna go through main phase two and right to my end step and stack some triggers. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've gotta sacrifice my Mishra's Warform. I'm gonna put that on the stack first, but then I'm gonna have two Wondrous Crucible triggers. I'm gonna have those resolved first. So I'm gonna end up milling four, and we're gonna see what I do on my exile effects for casting spells. So my first mill is a Stryonic Resonator and a Path of Ancestry. That'll trigger me to exile a card at random and then cast it without paying its mana cost. And I'll be exiling an Executioner's Capsule. 
So I'll get a copy of Executioner's Capsule, which is great, because that's going to be more removal. I'm going to go ahead and do it again. We're going to mill Vault of Whispers and an Oblivion Stone. And we're going to repeat the same effect. It's going to be a Wayfarer's Bobble. All right, that's not bad. That's extra ramp. I mean, yeah, he's got a lot of free stuff happening over there. So I will have a copy now of a Wayfarer's Bobble and an Executioner's Capital. My last trigger, the Warform is going to go by, and I'll pass it over. All right, I'm going to go ahead and untap. All right, so to start my turn, let's go ahead and play Tishar, the Ancestor's Apostle. It's going to cost me four mana, so we've got two and three, four, a blue and a white for the Chrome Courier or a historic spell enters the battlefield, I can bring something back with three CMC or less uh, to the battlefield. Plus, I'll also pay the two oh, well, with the historian I, to oh, make well. another construct. Uh, when Chrome Courier enters the battlefield, I get to reveal the top two cards and put one in my hand and one into the graveyard. Okay, we've got the Mere Blast Sphere and the Phyrexian Rebirth. Phyrexian Rebirth seems very scary. It's pretty good. I, I'll take that, and I'll put the Mere Blast Sphere into my graveyard. Let's go ahead and declare attacks. I'm going to go all in at Astrals. We got five in the air and four on the ground. Yeah, no blocks. That's going to give me three more Thopters, and you are going to take uh, nine damage. And, you know, I didn't do a lot but I'll pass the turn. I didn't do a lot. Actually, I probably should, I should not be, <laughs> I should be laying low and not do <laughs> Duck it down. <laughs> Play a planes for the turn. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I should be able to do things with that. Can you do any damage to our girl? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's Solom. That's Solom. It's looking scary. I mean, the Solom could be a Swolom. So we <laughs> discussed that scooping is an instant speed, so I'm just going <laughs> to... You, so you're saying if I can deal some damage to Nurgle, it's going to be helpful? It's, and it's, you might be able to... It's going to be helpful. All right, well then, that's all I need to know. I'm going to tap. One, two, three, four, and play... Whirler Rogue 2-2. Two, two. When it enters, I create two Thopters, and I can tap two untapped artifacts I control. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Mm -hmm. One, two. I will also pay one and equip Cranial Plating to Solemn Simulacrum. So it is Swollen. And now it is Swollen. <laughs> Seven artifacts, so it's a 9-2. I'll tap one, two, four, Steel Overseer, and I might as well tap one and equip Skull Clamp. So it's an 11-1. I'm going to tap two untapped artifacts I control. Uh, you know what, I'll tap the Thopter, and I have no tricks here, so I'm just gonna tap the Seal of the Synod. Okay. That's my other one. So this is unblockable. Oh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm no. gonna <laughs> swing my what ten uh, ten one solemn simulacrum at you, and it's unblockable. I've got nothing I can do about that, so yeah. I guess I'm taking ten. Mm -hmm. Swollen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I untap, draw. I'll play Smoldering Marsh as a land untap. Veggie Wagon just played Whirler Rogue. It can give his things unblockable. But it can give my things unblockable too. Could, could I convince Veggie Wagon to give my creatures unblockable? Now I'm gonna do a cool thing, but those Thopters might get in my way. But luckily, I have the Whirler Rogue that could help us knock out Nerd Girl before she destroys our board and makes 30 30 30s. You wanna do a little powwow together? Maybe? Predatory powers activate! I think we can make this work. I'm gonna go ahead and start off my turn by casting Workshop Elders. It's a human artificer. Artifact creatures I control have flying. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have target non-creature artifact you control become a zero zero artifact creature. If you do, put four plus one plus one counters on it. Now, I am going to pay five mana 
to cast Mishra Eminent One, just like Astral Slam. High five. High five. As being of combat on my turn, make a token that's a copy of target non-creature artifact that control, except its name is Mishra Warform, and it's a 4-4 construct artifact creature in addition, to, in addition to its other types. It gains haste till end of turn, sacrifice it, beginning of the next end step. Yeah, we knew that already. That's true. <laughs> I am going to go to combat. I'll have the triggers from Mishra and Workshop Elders. Workshop Elders is going to make Commander Sphere into a 0-0 zero, zero artifact creature and put four plus one plus one counters on it. Mishra's Eminent One is going to make a... That's going to make a copy of Spine of Ishsa as a 4-4 uh, Mishra's Warform. That is going to trigger Spine of Ishsa's uh, ability, and I'm going to use that to target Tashar. Now, since all of my artifact creatures have flying... I'm going to swing the board at MTG Nerd Girl. Okay. Okay, I'm going to tap two artifacts. I'm going to tap Skull Clamp and Cranial Plating uh, to give that Metalwork Colossus. Uh, it can't be blocked. Now that you've made my Metalwork Colossus unblockable, would you like to make anything else unblockable? Yeah, I see you have two untapped artifacts left. You're asking me to go to go completely defenseless? Well, maple- all right, all right. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'll answer what would you like? Potentially, let, let's go with the Commander Sphere so it doesn't get blocked. It's unblockable. Hmm. Don't have a, a lot of great options, so I'll just use a Thopter to block the one, and I'll take the 21, the all the two unblockables and the Trample. I can't do anything about it. So I'll just block with one Thopter token and take 21. All right. Hopefully the other two damage can come from Ashel's Flame at some point. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. All right, and that will sacrifice my war form due to Mishra Eminent One. Veggie's looking at Astral's so intently, praying that he kills me because he knows he's going to die if he doesn't. <laughs> That's true. Please, he's Astrals. just like Astral's. He, I, like, I see the death stare. He's like, Astral, save me, please. Do us all a favor. <laughs> Can we strike a deal? Absolutely. No. All right. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter. Got you. All right. <laughs> I'm tapping six. I'll agree to anything. It's fine. And I'm going to jam down my good buddy, Bruticlad. So Bruticlad is awesome. He's a 4-4 creature tokens I control of haste. At the beginning of combat, on my turn, I create a 2-1 blue Phyrexian mirror. Then I may choose a creature token I control. If I do, each other creature I control becomes a copy of that. I'm going to move to combat. Yeah. Okay. I have some triggers to award. So, Warform is going to come into a copy of my Wondrous Crucible. All right, so I've got this awesome 4-4 Wondrous Crucible. It's back again. Now I've got my Bruticlad trigger. I'm going to get this awesome 2-1 Phyrexian Mer, but now the other part of Bruticlad triggers. My tokens can all become a copy of something. I'm going to choose Mishra's Warform because it's non-legendary. All of my tokens now, which is my Mer, my two other tokens from before, are all going to be 4-4 Mishra's Warforms that are copies of my Wondrous Crucible. And James, you're kind of wide open right now. I'm going to send 16 damage your way. I like this. They're all 4-4s, four eh? They're all 4-4s. Four I kind of need my Mishra and my Workshop Elders to stay alive if I have the hope of killing MTG Nerd Girl next turn, if it even gets to that point. Oh, you're not going to survive next till next turn. I probably won't. I think I am going to take the 16. All right. Wow. All right, well, I dealt some damage. I'm going to move to my end step, and now I've got five triggers of Wondrous Crucible for all my token copies. <laughs> Let the shenanigans begin. So first mill is Hedron and a Swamp, so... And our first copy is... Oblivion Stone. That's not enough mana. We're good. No, no, I don't. I've got three on it, but... Unless there's the artifact, the mana artifact that he just milled that's cast off of the graveyard randomly. That's possible. It's up to chance, because it's got, he's, he's got to hit it oh, randomly. Oh, I thought, I thought he yeah. just hit it. Second trigger. We get a Boiler Works. And a Muzio, the Visionary Architect. And this time we're going to get a copy of the Hedron. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, the thing that we were just worried about, that's all. So we got extra mana rocks, it feels pretty good. So let's go for the third. We've got a Temple of Epiphany and a Mind Stone. Also, my ward triggers are all stacked. I apparently now have ward 10 on all my uh, permanents. We go down to ward 8, but yeah, no targeting me. Exiling Estrionic Resonator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Well, I can't do anything. I'm definitely going to lose. And I don't actually even understand everything that's happening over there. So my plan is I'm just going to kill Veggie on my way out. We we do cutaways, right, in the show so that, like, when you have something like that, then you can tell it, like, everybody privately and you don't have to announce your plan. No, no, I want you to know. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll go for the fourth. Uh, it is going to be Exotic Orchard and a Geth Lord of the Vault. Just like an artifact infomercial. Just wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder's Crucible is a great card. You should totally play it. Especially when you copy it four times. I'm going to get a Geth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It, it sounds like it's really good. Don't know what it does yet, but it sounds very good. I'm not going to worry about it. Finally, the last trigger, and then I promise my turn's over. Uh, it's going to be a Swamp and a Hellkite Igniter. Really sad music, raindrops falling down a window. We're going to get a Muzio, Visionary Artifact. And I'm finally done. My war form's going to get sacrificed, and I've got a... Yeah, this is, um, I, maybe I'm the threat now. Um, <laughs> I don't maybe. even want to think about what's going on Ask over there. The turd. Okay, I'm going to untap. I hope I do something cool. It says with board wipe in hand. <laughs> well, so, so if I board wipe, I think I kill myself. I think my best bet is to just kill veggie and die happy. We had a, I want this. I want this moment. Uh, this like just like decked out. Kill veggie and die happy. Like <laughs> that's the that's, that's the tagline now. It's <laughs> a good slogan. All right, I'm gonna play a baleful Strix, a flying death toucher that when it enters the battlefield, I can draw a card. Try and find more answers. Hmm. So veggie, you got one creature over there. You block my biggest thing. You take a lot. Yeah. A lot. I can't believe you gave all of his stuff unblockable. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Should have been there. All right, I'm just gonna make a big swing at Veggie here, and I'm I probably can kill him. It's gonna be really close. I'll let him do the math on that. But I'm gonna leave myself mostly dead, and I'm hoping that Astrals will blow up the board with his Oblivion Stone. All right, I'm going. I'm gonna kill Veggie. I'm taking Veggie out with me. Everything except for the Steel Overseer. I can only mean one thing. Yeah, I mean, the, so my block is, is of course, uh, the rogue to one of your constructs, which are the biggest things, right? Yep. Yeah. And we're going to make everything else bigger. So everything will get more counters. So these these three little guys get one. We're going to do some ones. I got ones on everything. I don't know if I have enough dice. Cool. So you are blocking one of the constructs. Construct is a 13-13. Uh, plus the two, 15, four, 19, five, 24, 29. Mm -hmm. But so, so 33. I believe so. I am alive, uh, but not by a lot. Yeah. Um, okay, so my Whirl of Rogue is dead. I, I think that's all I can do. I don't really love it, but like, I don't think there's much else. Okay. Pass the turn. So I think I win the game this turn. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're all surprised. No. I was like, oh. You would be the one to do that, though. I'm going to play Temple of Enlightenment, uh, Scry 1. I'm going to leave that on top. I'm not going to think about it too much. Because you probably won't get to draw it anyway. I'm going to tap 1. And I'm going to equip Skull Clamp to one of these Thopters. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's going to die. I'm going to draw two cards. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Six for Hexavus. It's a uh, six mana for a flyer. Enters with six plus one plus one counters on it. I can remove a counter to put a flying counter on another target creature. I can remove a counter uh, from another creature to put a plus one plus one counter on it. Right now... The Solemn Simulacrum is 9. Overseer makes it 10. Skull Clamp would make it 11. Hexavus would not be able to put a counter on it. He's trying hard to get out of it. I'm going to dig deep. Pay 1. I'm going to equip Skull Clamp to the last Thopter. So it is going to bring the uh, Solemn down 1, but I'll get to draw 2 more cards. Alright, I will pay 1 to equip Skull Clamp to Solemn. I'm going to pay one to remove a counter from the Hexavus, which is now a five from the six, uh, to give Solemn a flying counter. 
I wonder. So you have all of your all of yours fly, yes. or all of your artifacts fly. So you yes. have. I have a potential to make two more with these. So I have one, two. But you have none three. right now. None right now. Correct. You could attack me for however much that is. Or, so that you don't go back on your word with your friend here, you could theoretically attack him since he has no flyers, and then I could finish them both off. Wouldn't it be a shame if I used an Oblivion Stone in response to that attack, though? I mean, you could do that at any, at any point anyway. But he wouldn't if he hit you. Yeah. I think we at least get the damage true and force it out. Uh, I've never, never made the mistake of leaving somebody alive at a very low life because I thought they weren't a threat. And definitely wasn't Nerd Girl in the past. Uh, I'm going to go to combat. Solemn, swinging at you, Astrals. Swinging at me. For nine. I'll take the nine. Take ten? I'll take the ten. Okay. I'm just going to put one more back there. One here. One here. Pass my turn. All right, I untap, and that might mean the Oblivion Stone might have to come right at me. All right, we'll see what we can do here. I'll start off by playing Temple of Epiphany and Scrying. I said, what about... I'll keep that on top. Temple of Epiphany. I'm going to go to combat. Triggers on Workshop Elders and Mishra Eminent One. Mishra Eminent One is going to make my Great Furnace a Mishra's Warform. Come forth, Warform. And I'm going to make the Synod a, have 4-4 four, four counters on it. Now, since my artifacts have flying due to Workshop Elders, attack you Astrals with both of these 4-4s four, and Metalwork Colossus at Astrals. I will go at Astrals with the Commander Sphere, Traxos at Nerd Girl. Workshop Elders and Mishra at Astral's. So everything at Astral's except for Traxos, which is at Nerd Girl. Correct. Correct. Cool, I like that. <laughs> We're friends. Yeah. Uh, I can't do much because it's trampling, so I'm going to hope that it gets blown up. I'm going to blow it up. Fantastic. We're going to lose a lot of stuff, but I, I think this is the only way to keep us alive. So mm -hmm. I will be tapping... Uh, Five, because Dreamstone taps for three, and I'll be using my copy of Oblivion Stone, which says, sacrifice it, destroy each non-land permanent without a fate counter. I have a response. I will sacrifice my Commander Sphere to draw a card. In response, I'll do the same. Maybe we picked the wrong decks? No! Look! <laughs> I think we're doing fine. <laughs> all right, so all non-land permanents will be destroyed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's clean them up. Um, we at least get something out of it because we both had sad robots on the board, so we'll get to draw. Oh, yeah. Sad robots do get to draw. Now the board is entirely clear, so I'm going to go ahead and just let Astrals and uh, James play out their creatures. I'll use this board clear that they probably forgot about by now, and I'll be the only one left with a creature. I got to take eight here, so I'll go to six after a very clean board. I will go ahead and cast, paying four mana for Padim... Console of Innovation. Three and a blue for a 1-4, legendary. Artifacts you control have hexproof. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control the artifact with the highest mana value or tied for the highest mana value, draw a card. Then I'll pass my turn. I'm going to untap my measly four lands here because I've been doing all that shenanigans on, <laughs> on artifacts. <laughs> I will tap four and I'll play Atraxis. Yes. I'll pass the third. <laughs> um, well, I don't really have a ton to do here. I'm going to play an Evolving Wilds for my turn. Um, and I guess I'll go ahead and just tap six. And I'll go ahead and just play the Phyrexian Rebel uh, Rebirth, which destroys all creatures and gives me uh, XX, it gives me XX creatures and they get X based on the number of creatures destroyed. Goodbye, Padim. I'm just gonna put it as a construct. So I get a three, three and we killed three things and that feels pretty good. Does that count as land destruction? Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just crack my Evolving Wilds and get the first basic I find. It's a planes. And then I'll pass my turn. I, am I in the best position here? How did this happen? Draw a card. And six for Sharding Sphinx? Sharding Sphinx? Sharding Sphinx. Sphinx. Three for Etched Champion. It's a 2-2 and it has protection from all colors as long as I control three or more artifacts. Um, 
which I don't because I wasn't reading the cards before. This Orsav Signet and this Demir Signet should be dead, but we caught it now. That's great. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to take that back. <laughs> we already have seven comments telling us that you cheated. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that, editor. I passed my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Al on tap, I will pay seven mana to cast Spine of Ishaw once again since it got returned to my hand and target your Sharding Sphinx to destroy it. All right. <laughs> It's dead. I passed my turn. I'll untap and pray to top deck a land here. We'll ask and you receive. Get my Shadow Blade Ridge. Time to do one of the most broken plays there is. I'm going to tap one and cast a Faithless Leading. So I'll draw two cards and then discard two cards. I thought you were going to say Soul Ring. I thought you were going to say Soul Ring. <laughs> discard Glint Raker and Workshop Elders. Unfortunately, so I will discard those two cards and I'm gonna go ahead and tap four play machine gods effigy You may have machine gods effigy enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield Except that it is an artifact in addition to a type and it taps for blue. I w Will not be targeting anything because that's a zero zero. So I will pass the turn mm. <laughs> All right <laughs> have a die. Draw I'm going to go ahead and play an yeah. island for turn. And I'm just going to go ahead and play the Thopter Spy Network. This says at the beginning of your upkeep, I get a 1-1 Thopter. And whenever an artifact creature I control deals combat damage to a player, I draw a card. So um, let's go ahead and come into Veggie for three with an artifact creature. Sure you want to do that? Should I not do that? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm confirming that this is what you want to do. She wants to do that. Should I not do that? I'm just confirming that that's what you want to do. <laughs> uh, I would really like to draw a card. Okay. Hmm. Now I'm having second thoughts. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay, no blocks. Great, I get to draw a card. Take three. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go ahead and tap four mana. This one taps for two for the Videlkin uh, Humiliator. And it is a metal craft that uh, when it attacks, if you control three or more artifacts, opponent's creatures lose all abilities and have power and toughness equal to a 1-1. One, one. That's cool. Okay. That is very yeah, cool. And then I will pass my turn. Uh, end of your turn, I'm going to flash in Wreck Hunter. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, when it enters, I choose a player and I create a power stone for each non-land that, that died. Um, but I don't think anybody had anything die that turn, so... Yeah. It's just 2-2. Two, two. Mm -hmm. Razor Tie Bridge is land for turn. I'm going to pay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for Bronze Guardian. Double Strike Ward 2. My artifacts also have Ward 2. Uh, power equal number of artifacts I control. I have uh, two artifact lands and the Bronze Guardian itself. So it's a 3-5. Then I'm going to tap 1, 2, 3. Oh, if you can kill this, I'm gonna, you can kill me can for an etch champion um and i do have three artifacts so it's got protection from everything nice uh combat wreck hunter i'm gonna hit james can't do anything about that pass you're at my life but you can't hurt my feelings i bet you i could do a good job <laughs> i'm gonna start off by playing expressive iteration Clear the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, put one on the bottom of the library, and exile one of them. You may play the exiled card this turn. All right, I'll put this card in my hand, put this card on the bottom, and I'll exile Executioner's Capsule. Then I'm gonna go ahead and play my Swamp to play out my Executioner's Capsule. And I'll pass my turn. All right, I will untap here. I'm gonna tap four and play Smelting Vat. Uh, one and tap it, sacrifice another artifact, reveal the top eight cards of your library, and I can put up to two non-creature artifact cards with total mana value X or less, or equal to the sacrifice arc's mana value, onto the battlefield, and the rest go on the bottom, shuffled. Machine God's Effigy is gonna tap, and I'm gonna use that one on the Vat and sacrifice the Effigy. Mm -hmm. So I can put up to two that cost four total. Yeah. We're gonna be revealing a mirror, a Baron's Spine, Blast Hellkite, Farnod, Michael Synth Wellspring, Thirst for Knowledge, and Silas. They have to be non-creature artifacts. 
Um, I think out of all that, I'm only going to take the Cursed Mirror. Yeah. What's it going to be? I'm going to have it be a copy of your relic, I believe, the uh, your Black Tutu, if I recall. So I'll move to combat, and I will just be swinging my Cursed Mirror at James, because you came in with a lot of damage, and I think you've got the highest life total. That's true. I'll take two. And I'm going to pass it after that. All right. This says, at the beginning, uh, my Thopter Spy Network said, being if you my upkeep, if I control an artifact, I get to create the Thopter. So I'm going to get to go ahead and make a little Thopter. Woohoo! All right. We're going to play an Ancient Den to start my turn. Two black, six mana, and we're going to play the Wire Surgeon. It's a 6-5 with fear, and it says, everything I control has Encore, which means I pay the mana to bring back an artifact from my graveyard to the battlefield, and then I create a copy of it for each opponent, and it attacks this turn if able. That's disgusting. Oh. So I'm going to pay the two that I have to go ahead and bring back a Steel <laughs> Overseer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But rather than make them attack, mm-hmm. I'm going to tap to give all of my stuff counters. Yeah. Um, Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move to combat. And um, hmm. I also want to kill Veggie if I can. If I can convince MTG Nerd Girl to attack Astral Flame with a three power creature and attack the rest of her creatures at Veggie Wagon, there's a way that I could get a double kill. Something good might happen to your creatures if you attack Veggie and him. What do you mean? something good might happen. I see. Well, I have to attack Veggie with three things, which is tough. Do all my creatures get a buff? All of your creatures get a buff. I see. How much of a buff? Let's just say double the buff. Wow, that's a lot of buff. Cool. Okay, well, I'm gonna just go based on what uh, James says here. I'm gonna attack for three, and then I'll come over here to you for the four, five, six, seven, eight. And all of... Your opponent, all your opponent's stuff become one, one, no ability creatures. Oh, oh! oh. And how okay. much, how much damage is that coming it's at him? It's three here, and then four, five, six, seven, eight. I thought it was fine with the double strike and the protection from everything, but that's gone. Uh, Guardian to the uh, Phyrexian and S Champion to uh, one of the copies. Okay. Ah, I have a trick up my sleeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After blocks are declared, I'm going to pay double red and sacrifice my Spine of Ishna, uh, Issa to flash in Blast Furnace Hellkite. This says, artifact offering, you may cast this spell as though it had flashed by sacrificing an artifact and, and paying the difference in mana between the sacrifice artifact. Mana includes color, so double red, sacrifice a seven drop to cast my nine drop five five, dragon with flying and double strike, creatures attacking your opponents have double strike. Woo-hoo. Also, since Spine of Ishsa was sacrificed, it returns back to my hand. Cool. I can't even be mad about that because that's cool. Yeah. So, so you only take, you still, you, oh yeah, you take two. four. Oh, four. And then you take six. Yeah. We're dead. So we die. High five. Woo! What's up? Double kill. Ah. All right. That was, a, that was a big double kill. And then uh, whenever uh, a creature, an artifact creature I control deals combat damage to a player, I draw a card. So two creatures. Oh, this one's not an artifact. So I only draw one. So I get to draw for the turn for this. And then I'll move to my end step. And all of my copies will go away. Also on your end step. I will tap Spoldering Marsh on this island to use Executioner's Capsule to destroy your Thopter. Oh no, I think I'm dead. I have a 5-5 five, five double strike now. And it flies? And it Ooh. flies. Oh, and you're no. tapped out? And, I'm tapped and you're out. tapped out. That's, Is it my turn? That's your turn. All right, I'll untap. I... Blast Furnace Hellkite, deal direct damage to MTG Nerd Girl. <laughs> good games, good games. <laughs> oh man. These tanks are so good. Yeah. <laughs> Blast Furnace Hellkite. That thing's sick. All Death right. by dragon. What uh, better one? I know. Right? Oh man, that was super close. Yeah, it was. That one dragon at the end took out three players. I really thought I had that one there. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Don't forget to hit like if you liked it, and don't forget to hit subscribe if you really liked it. And don't forget that you can support us directly on Patreon. And as always, a big thank you to our sponsors, CoolStuffInc.com, EDH Rack, and Dragon Shield. We'll see you next time on Decked Decked Out. Out.